Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bold Live. How y'all been? I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving week, and now it's December 1st. We are headed right to the holiday season, and、um, wrapping up this month of December. I sure miss you guys. I'm glad we're back here. I see a lot of you here waiting, ready to meet our guest of honor today, Matthew Atkinson, Thomas Forrester. And boy, it's been a week for Thomas Forrester here on The Bold and the Beautiful. And we're going to get into that and talk to Matthew and get his thoughts on what's going on. Also, what am I wearing? This is Team USA, USA Baby World Cup. Did you guys all watch the World Cup the other day? Very exciting. USA plays on Saturday. It's the first game I've ever watched in my entire life. And,、um, I know nothing about the sport, but USA. So let's celebrate and let's have a fun, bold live. New day, three, two, one. Boom. Hello, everybody. Yes, I have only had one cup of coffee today. Oh, tragic story. Okay. As you're all coming in, I'll tell you the story. So we had an early morning meeting here at the office,、uh, our production meeting. We have that once a week to discuss next week's shows. And I got up extra early, ordered my. Coffee on my app for Starbucks, went to Starbucks. I decided to get an iced latte today. Tell me what, what is your favorite thing from, from Starbucks? But I got an iced latte. It was like the sugar cookie one and it had some sprinkles on it. Look, it was so good. I had, a, I had a nice little sip of it. Then I got it in my car and then、um, I went to put it into the cup holder and then kabloom, kablooey. The, the lid came off everywhere, the latte all over my console. So now my car smells like、uh, the holiday season. But if I don't get it cleaned properly, it's not going to be smell very good because it was almond milk. So I don't know. So let's be careful out there with your Starbucks and,、um, or your coffee, whatever you get. It, wasn't, it was, it was kind, of a, kind of a bad start to my day. But fortunately, got coffee here at the office and I'm ready to go. You, Christina, you like mint mochas? Okay. Oh, the peppermint. Mm hmm. Yep. I agree, Nick. Vente white chocolate mocha. Mm. Hot chocolate. Yes. I mean, we're going to find out. I wonder what Matthew's favorite、uh, Starbucks coffee is. So, ladies and gentlemen, oh, also, before Matthew comes in,、um, hot off the presses from Soap Opera Network,、uh, the ratings that just came in. Bold and beautiful. Thank you, fans. You hit it out of the park last week. Our ratings are at an all time high、um, for the week. I, wait, yeah, this was, this was the previous week, which was already high. The new week that just came out was even higher. So go check out the ratings on Soap Opera Network.、Um, thank you for posting that over there. And、uh, we just had an incredible week last week. Thanks to all of you guys. And、uh, let's keep it going as this year continues to、uh, just. Be one of the best in bold and beautiful history. So, thank you all for being there and for watching.、Um, what else do I got? Oh, and then, then afterwards, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on my Instagram and do a Casey Live.、Um, there's some, something special that I have to do. I'll explain later. But, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's please welcome Matthew Atkinson. Boom. Matthew, how are you? What's up? How are you doing, you, Casey? You've got, you've got your holiday lights up. You are ready for Christmas. I just never take them down. That's, that's the key. Well, that, that, that's helpful that way. Yeah, so you're you ready to go. You're going to go long and then you never have to worry about putting them back up again. Okay, so I you still look good. good. I like it. It looks good. It's, a, it's very, it's very、uh, cozy. Yeah, I like, I like my office to be cozy, and that's why I did it. And also, we didn't, we didn't plan this, but we have, we're wearing our matching flannels today. Yeah, we're both wearing flannels. Look at that. Yeah. We're both ready to chop wood and stuff. Yes, well, you can chop wood. I, I, I probably hurt myself.、Um, we'll give but, you a, like a, a baby little hatchet instead of an axe.、Okay. Do you chop、yeah. wood? Have you done that? Yeah. Oh.、No. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Well, I mean, if you're trying to be self sustained out, out in the wilderness, then you're going to have to chop your own wood. You can't just buy it at stores. See, I'm not an outdoorsy person. No, you go to Starbucks and get your. Oh, yeah. What do you get from Starbucks? Well, I'm not. I don't want to disparage anything. It's just like Starbucks always tastes burnt to me.、Um, so, like, I, I love like a black coffee or an espresso just by itself when it's good coffee beans. But 
Okay. Um, so at Starbucks, I'll get like a latte because it's like I just want to kind of cover over the the burnt flavor. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a relatively new coffee drinker, so I don't know the difference. It. I mean, it, it doesn't. If, if it tastes good to you, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, just, I don't. I just need uh, to wake up. <laughs> you got an ice. Why did you get an ice to drink? It's like 50 degrees at a high today in LA. I know, but I just wanted something like. I know, but it was probably better I got it cold than hot. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not well, doing. It. I'm not doing. It looks anything. like you're drinking hot coffee there. Yeah, this hot. Wait, what's in that cup? <laughs> hot. Yeah. Hot coffee. Okay. So, um, yeah. Hey, so I haven't seen you since uh, we were in uh, Louisiana together. That's true. That was fun. We're walking down Bourbon Street together and stuff. Yeah, we uh, we're there supporting Catherine Kelly Lang and her, uh, her cancer support communities charity event, and uh, got to meet some really cool people from Louisiana. That was a lot of fun. That's it's yeah. always the best part. Everyone's always really sweet there, and they a lot of them wanted you to take your shirt off though the whole time. Yeah, so. I, don't, I think I think that that uh, uh, Pearson just did it all the time. He's like Matthew McConaughey with his shirt. Oh, right. So they're like, "Oh, they, it's Thomas. He must want to take his shirt off." They just, yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, I think you're right. Um, I, I, I tend to keep those kind of things to myself, but or or when it's on the bold and the beautiful. Yeah, but there's always a reason for that, isn't there? Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's always a reason to have to change your clothes in the Forrester CEO office. There's always a reason for that. Yeah, well, yeah, especially when you get Thomas and Vinny together. Like, why wouldn't they be trying on clothes for no reason whatsoever? They oh, Vinny. Yeah, oh, gosh. We miss Vinny. I miss Vinny. You guys, that was a good, I mean, Thomas doesn't have a lot of friends, let's be honest. He doesn't have any friends. I know. How does that, how do you feel about that? I, I feel like the writers should write a friend for Thomas. That's what I think. I mean, I, I can't control the storyline, but I would love I would love for Thomas to have a, like a group of friends that, you know, even even nefarious characters that that, you know. Yeah, that's uh, kind of that's that's what was kind of cool about that. Now, um, I've got a have got a bunch of tweets from fans who are ready to ask you questions. Are you want to you want to hit some of these? Yeah, these burning uh, questions. Okay, yeah. well, this is more of a compliment. Uh, Kristen J. Tay says, uh, Matthew Atkinson always brings it. Such a talented actor. That's very sweet, Kristen. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, at Mother Mission says, M.A. knocked it out of the park performance. Thomas is a fascinating character because he's multifaceted and Matthew was able to carry it all off perfectly. Yeah. You said that that was from Mother Mission, at Mother Mission. Oh, that's so sweet. That's yeah, oh, I, I really appreciate that. It, it, I get a lot of comments like that. That that it, it's very complimentary to see that people love to see, not just obviously. I'm, I'm at times I'm playing a guy who's paranoid, schizophrenic, or or kind of like going off the rails and being mean or or threatening people. But also the other end of the spectrum, they love the comedy with with me and. Krista and me and Jackie and and they love that kind of stuff too. They they seem to think that I can I can do it all, and that's really really a huge compliment. Yeah. Now, have you had? But before you came to Bold and Beautiful, did you have a chance to do more comedy? Yeah. So I did. Well, I did a pilot. Uh, I did a bunch of plays that were comedies, and then uh, when I started doing TV work, I did a. Um, it was a show that never got picked up, and that's what really sucks. It was a uh, it was a single cam comedy, kind of like New Girl, um, and uh, and it was it it was it, it, there's a whole bunch of semantics, very Hollywood stuff, but basically the network just didn't want to they didn't want to do uh, scripted TV anymore. They wanted to focus on reality TV because it's cheaper, um, so they kind of axed the show. But um, but that kind of sucks because all I really want to do is comedy, and really. <laughs> And I guess I have a very dramatic look. Huh. Well, you played, I mean, before you came to Bold and Beautiful, you played Austin on Young and the Restless. There was no comedy there. No, he was another uh, kind of bad boy type character. Um, definitely had a skewed sense of right and wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah, messed up. Held a woman hostage like in the first month of me being on the show. 
So it's a soap opera. These things, <laughs> these things happen, but I hope you get a chance to do comedy at some point. Yeah, I would love to. That'd be awesome. Um, so at Missy Gracie three says, do you, now we're back to B and B. Do you see yourself as an anti-hero parentheses, a bad boy or a real villain? And please describe how you, that you define the difference. There is a lot of debate on this issue. They keep calling Thomas evil. Villains are evil, not bad boys. So, yeah, you, you know, that? that's, that's right. So, my, yeah, I, I think that I would say that Tom, I, I see Thomas, of course, I have to as the actor, but I think that even in the show that Thomas is sort of an anti-hero. He's, he's, the, he's the guy who, who still has goodness in his heart and, and just really, really struggles um, versus, you know, the Sheila character is kind of like the epitome, always going to be evil, always looking for the bad. Um, and that's not to say that Thomas can't do that. That definitely is how Thomas is pitched at times. Like you can see with the way that the music that's played in the background or, or the tweets or, or, or posts online that, that the show makes, they put, you know, like villain or, or evil, evil schemes and stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I think that I just see him as a kind of a bad boy anti-hero. I think that he's more on that side. I don't think that he's all bad. Well, let me ask, what was your opinion? You know, Thomas has come a long way. And then what was your what was your reaction, I should say, when you found out that you indeed called CPS on yourself? Well, I mean, I got um, I got that. I, got, I found out it's OK. You know what this is like when we do these these uh, crazy weeks where we have like 10 episode weeks and, and like two in a row or something like that. By halfway through the, the first week, you're kind of like, I, I, or at least I, this is how I have to work. I have to do each episode at a time. And so like there are times when I'm not even reading the scripts for next week yet because I just have so much in this week. And then I focus, focus on it over the weekend. Um, and I didn't find out that Thomas was one to call CPS till like two days before um, the script came out. And then we shot it, you know, like two days after that. So um, that was, yeah, that was like a quick turnaround, but it was sort of like, you could see a, multi a bunch of directions it could have gone. And that I thought maybe made more sense, at least in the way that we, it had been led up. So it definitely was, you know, out of left field. Um, finding out that Thomas was the one who did it. I mean, especially considering that for the last year he spent all his time saying how uh, mm -hmm. honesty is number one. And uh, I mean, it's just like his entire focus in life was on, on having his son and being a good father. And then like randomly he's going to call CPS on himself. Like that backfires. Then his whole, everything he wants in life goes kabloom. So, but yeah. What was my reaction? I was like, what? Like, here he goes again. Here he goes again, I guess. Yeah. This because you did, because you because Thomas had done so many great things. I mean, you you rescued Liam from in jail, like you you found the the evidence that Vinny it was, you know, intentional. And uh that was that was that was a huge move because you could have just left Liam there to rot, you know. Yeah, and especially over like the last year, it was, I mean, Steffi was the one who was kind of like um, front manning all of the manipulation when it came to the parents. You know, she was the one who came to Thomas and was like, hey, we need to get the security footage and we need to, you know, steal that footage and da 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 and all that kind of stuff. And it's like she headlined all of that. And then mm -hmm. Thomas, I, the way that I justified it, at least when, when that came out in the script, I was like, the only way I see justification for this is it's a split second decision. Like it's something that Thomas, like he just got so pissed in the moment that Brooke for years and years just like never believes in him. And then she says she's going to call CPS on him. And he's like, you know what? I'm a great father. Let him show up and and, and we'll see what happens. And then as a, as a bonus, it's like, well, maybe that gets dad out of out of that relationship for good and allows him to be happy. But obviously not the not the not the smartest move, right? Well, okay. So uh, Jim, at Jim Photo SWI says Matthew plays the part of Thomas so well. His demeanor lends itself well to being the villain. How do you, how does he feel about playing Thomas? So overall, what's it like being uh, the son of Ridge and Taylor? Um, 
what is it like being the son of Ridge and yeah. Taylor? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I, yeah, I think that there's so much family trauma there. Like you just look at the history of what Thomas has had to go through and what his parents have done and what happened to him in his youth. And, and, you know, his dad's kind of a piece of crap. I know he's always like seen as the hero, but he, he's, he's the, he's the, uh, you know, he, he kind of never can make a decision on a woman and, um, that lends itself to destroying families. And that's what's happened with his family. So um, there's a lot of trauma from childhood. So I think that's what makes Thomas mm-hmm. such an understandable mm-hmm. villain is because you mess them up a little bit. And, uh, and so if you see that in Thomas, you go, wow, yeah, that makes sense. Um. I just had somebody call me. Sorry about that. I hope I didn't screw up this. Uh, you ruined the entire thing. I can't no, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope it's okay. Um, no, nobody saw it. Uh, what, well, what I was going to say, adding to that, like these are similar, similar questions, but I want to give everybody a chance here. Um, at Cindy Y and R at Cindy Y and R. Okay. Well, uh, Matthew, are you happy in the way your character is heading back down uh, the bad path again? Would you rather have stayed on the Thomas character who was the straight and narrow? I don't really have a, an opinion on whether straight and like Thomas is, is good or bad. I just want there to be a reason for him to do whatever he does. Like, and you know, hmm. like I, I just want, like, I, I think that Thomas, it's fun to play Thomas when he's, he's, you know, being the bad guy. It's also fun to play around and joke around with, you know, Steffi and Ridge and Taylor and all that and, and have a good time. So um, I don't really have a, a, I just want, like, I just, I, I, I didn't, hmm. after the last year and a half, I, if it was me choosing, I would have chosen a different route um, mm. because it, I just, I just, it just seemed like it was a very split second decision, but sometimes people do those kind of things. So it is what it is. But well, are, are you saying you had an opportunity to maybe expand your character and grow, do something different? Yeah. You know, you, actually you got, <laughs> you got a lot of crap uh, a couple weeks ago for, for the bold live you did. And because you said something and I, I, I think I, I can refresh it was something along. People took this the wrong way. I think that you said like, um, we play to people's strengths or something, and, mm-hmm. and people thought that you were indicating that I somehow only can play crazy. And I know that you know that that's not true. I think that what has kind of happened with the character was that when I first came onto the show, um, that's the way that Brad went with the character, mm-hmm. and then it it went so well. And like the ratings, you know, skyrocketed and people seemed to love seeing, you know, someone right. stirring everything up and they saw that I could do it. And so that they, they kept kind of like making Thomas and, having it, Thomas go down and it was a character, off. a character that was uh, uh, missing on the show. Like you play, you, you filled a, you know, that made the show work in all different levels. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that that was a lot of fun to play. And I, th- I think it's been done a couple of times now. Like, not it's not that oh, bad and good because obviously people this character is is going to have struggles between going between bad and good. But it's more like that. It's sort of the same reasons for things. And I think that what I was hearing from the people when they were calling in um, from the from the bit that I watched was like they just wanted something different. I think they just wanted like a different. Yeah. Reason. If Thomas is going to do something, let's have it be for a different reason, not just, you know, he's kind of losing it because we've kind of played that out. And hmm. um, and I, I understand that perspective. I get it. Well, good. Well, I appreciate you watching the bold live. And if you if you missed out on that one, that was our last one we did where I just opened the phone lines and uh, had some lively conversations with fans. So that was a lot of fun. Um, well, I, I watched like I watched like uh, the first fifteen minutes, and I and I'm pretty sure that by like question two, you were like, okay, so um, what do you, like as soon as you answered the phone, what do you have to say about Thomas? Because everyone seemed to be really 
<laughs> really upset about well what, and that's what when i'm like well doing. i just need matthew on the show like let's just talk let's just ask him these questions let him talk if you want to hear sure. from him let's you talk so now uh at money m i didn't get the rest of it it cut it off what happens next for thomas now that everything is out in the open how can he redeem himself moving forward do you see a path of redemption here uh, hmm, I don't know. That's a tough one because, yeah. I mean, obviously there's always a way to redemption, but I think that it's it's through a, a darker path. Like if I were going to write it, which, you know, I'm not the one who's writing the show at all, but to plan something that was like a redemptive thing, it would happen after Thomas went a little bit deeper because I think John Thomas has total reason to be completely PO'd at his father. I mean, his father went to his mom and basically said, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to be with you because of what Brooke did. And she was like, no, get away from me. I don't want you in my life. And he was like, no, 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 please, please, please. She's like, what did Brooke do now? And Ridge is like, uh, nothing. It's not about Brooke. This is because I love you. And so he made these promises that weren't actually true. And, um, and that that's him hurting Thomas's mother again. Um, so I see every reason for Thomas to, to maybe sideline, start his own fashion company or do something that is more as a, as a, uh, antithesis to Forrester creations and his family. So he can fight his family. Um, and I, I would think love, I would that, love that idea. I would love that idea. I think through that you can have a redemption because you can actually have, you can have them fight and hash out all the things that are wrong with everything that everyone did in the past and it's not just thomas is a piece of crap because he did something stupid and everyone else seems to be a saint it's like no everyone else isn't a saint and thomas can come in and you know read him the riot act and i think that through that you can lead to a redemptive storyline um uh i was just in hearing you talk you mentioned like do your own fashion house i think the the dynamic between you and jacqueline mckinnis wood you plays plays your sister steffi you guys are so good. At, I feel like there's so much there to to mind that that would be fun to explore that more. And then also now, you know, with Taylor and Ridge and how th those dynamics would be the family unit. If you guys are at odds with each other would be interesting. I think there. Yeah. And I think that you guys, all the producers, everyone at the top, Brad, and everyone like the, there's a great there's someone's doing a great job casting because. Uh, you know, so you have to have a vision to see these things come together. But when you see Torsten and Krista and Jackie and me, it feels like a family. And there's totally. a dynamic totally. there and there's a history there. And even though some of these characters, like me and Krista are pretty new. Jackie's been on for a while. Torsten's been on for a while. But those those relationships feel so natural. And we look like a family, which is something Well, hard Matthew, you've been on for almost four years. You're... Uh, yeah, no, no, but I'm, 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 I'm one of the newest. There's, yeah, you know, well, you're, yeah, I'd but, say you're, you're a veteran at this point. Four uh, years. Well, I mean, you've uh, had some well, of the biggest storylines, biggest moments. I mean, it's pretty, um, yeah, but okay. Compared to John McCook or Catherine Kelly Lang. What I'm saying is, is that when, when you bring on me to the show and then I can immediately have a, a like a chemistry yes. with my yes. sister, it's a, it's a big deal. No longer, like no matter how long you've been on the show, sometimes those chemistries just never come together and ours True. just fit so naturally. I, I can't recall when you auditioned, who was your chemistry read with? Annika. Annika. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it was a Liam scene. True. It was a Liam Steffi scene from the past, which is interesting. But, well, we're yeah. going to get into Thomas and Hope in a minute. Um, uh, hey. Let's see. Uh, oh, this was an interesting question from uh, Angelo or Angel of Music. Sorry, Angel of Music 27. Also, yeah. would you like to see Brooke and Thomas have a scene where she gets him to admit he needs help and that they actually come to this realization together in an emotional moment with Brooke where Brooke is the one to convince him that he needs to check himself into a facility. Um, I mean, I love every scene I get to have with, with Kelly. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I, I want, I want Thomas and Brooke to have a storyline together. And I don't, I, I would rather it not be the exact same thing it has been for the last four years, which is, you know, Brooke thinks Thomas is a piece of crap and, and he's, you know, just losing it and she doesn't want anyone around him because he's unsafe. I would love for something a little bit on, on a deeper level, like like they actually 
like they're working together to do something. If that, even if that's getting them help or, or if it's something related to fashion or if it's, you know, some kind of relationship that brings them together, I would love that because I love working with her and I just don't get to do it enough. That would be okay. I'm my brains. We'll talk later. I'm thinking about okay. something, but, um, uh, this is from, uh, Destiny Star 7, M.A. is such a handsome man and a talented fashion designer. Why can't his character, Thomas, have a beautiful love interest? Will he go to court? Oh, this is another question, but let's just talk about the love interest. Okay. Uh, uh, and then she also says, love, love you, Matthew Atkinson. And then this uh, Chris Attaway says, when will Thomas get a new love interest that is not hope, but someone new? Um, and, uh, yeah, so, oh, I had to turn the page. I forgot to turn the page. I got questions on this other side. Anyway, this person also said, what happened to Thomas in Paris? So, okay, so maybe this year coming up, Thomas can be in a stable relationship. That would be I would love that. That would be Please. good. <laughs> yeah, the, I think, I think the Thomas obsessed with hope thing is a little played out. I, I'm, mm -hmm. um, Annika and I both, I think, and well, you know what? Last time, I think, I forget when this was, but I did an interview and I said, Annika and I, and then I, and I said something and, and like two or three people got really upset that I, that I, that I, um, I said something that Annika and me both think. Um, so I'll just speak for myself because they were like, let Annika speak for herself. And like, we literally had this conversation together and she agreed. I mean, like she was actually the one who brought up the conversation, but either way. I, I I get where you're coming from. I get where you're. I, coming I can from. imagine every week with this stuff, but yes. um, I think that um, Thomas and Hope could be a great romantic relationship, but we've we've. I don't see how that works now. Like it's 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 way, it needs to be way far removed from where we're at right now. Um, we mm -hmm. had the opportunity mm -hmm. a couple of times, and we didn't go that direction. Um, and so, you know, I, and I'm kind of just, you know, I don't like being Pepe Le Pew to, to, to hope it's, um, um, it's not fun. It's not, you know, I don't think it's redeemable or, or helpful. For the, I don't even think it's natural for the character of Thomas. It does. It seems, it feels, um, unnatural, uh, doing those kind of things. So, um, I would love for him to have a fresh new love interest. Um, you know, I thought when when we first started, Thomas and Sally would have been a great thing. I think uh, that someone, you yes. someone fiery, um, so that there's a lot of like fire and passion in that relationship. Um, that would be great. Um, as far as Thomas and Paris goes, that's more of a question for you because like they had Thomas go to Paris and be like, "Hey, I like you," and she was like, "Okay, bye," and then you know, like. <laughs> Three months later, just I don't know what it, it just this just aired. I think recently was Paris being like Thomas is really hot. It's like, yeah, he offered himself to you, and he said no. So obviously wasn't that hot. Um, but yeah, so that's more of a question for you. What happened to Thomas and Paris? Keep watching. <laughs> okay, sure. Keep watching. Well, that's yeah. always the answer. <clears throat> we'll talk after. Uh, okay. But, um, okay, so I want, mm, you want to open the phone lines and see who's on the phone lines? Before I do that, I have a video question. So I'm going to go to the video question. Uh, this is from Kyle. Hi, Matt. Kyle Baxter from Toronto, Canada. My question for you is, what has been your favorite Thomas scene when he's at his evil list? When you're at your evil list. What's up, Kyle? Thanks for. I know. For, Thank uh, you, Kyle. By the way, anybody's welcome to send in a video question too, if you want to be on the show. Just... Thomas at his most evil. What was my favorite? Um, you know, I, I, you know, there are times when I wish I could, I could go back and do the the, yeah. the intimidation stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, what he was really getting in people's faces. Um, that stuff was. It was a lot of fun, but it felt natural. All this anger coming from it just from this point of he had basically lost everything and he's sick and tired of it. And he's just going to make the world the way he wants it to be instead of things happening like, you know, 
the mother of his child dying and, and his, his son not having a mother anymore, all this, all this and his, his childhood being kind of crappy and his parents never being together and all this stuff. It seems like he, he had this point of view of like, well, now I'm just going to take what, whatever the heck I want. And it felt really natural. and It was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I wish I could do something like that. I think, I feel like during that time period, um, that was that it, it's a lot tougher when it's about like the it's the baby Beth thing and Thomas Kent came into the end right. of that. It, I think it would be really fun to do something similar, but but it, but maybe even from a more pure place. Like there's a I mean there would be a reason for him to say threaten Sheila's life after she shoots his sister, right? Something like that that really gets Thomas. On you get the bad side of Thomas, but for a good thing, and then everyone is on his side for it. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, well, I always think you know, maybe you're not at your evilest, you're just pushed to a breaking point, you know, where you're just you know, not given a chance in a sense, yeah. And I think that, like, with the, with the baby Beth thing, we, we had Thomas kind of going off the rails, but. But that was a lot of fun to play. Plus, there's a lot of we have a lot of great actors that are, that are just fun to bounce off of and have fun with on the show. Um, but you know, I, I think that my my the most fun I have is when I get to give when I have scenes with Scott and I get to give mm -hmm. Liam a whole bunch of crap and just t read him the right act and because he's a he's a pretty much a horrible person that everyone seems to forgive him for everything. Liam, Liam, <laughs> yeah, Liam, yeah. Well, I can't speak for Liam, but I was going to say when you have scenes with Scott and it, yeah, but when you have scenes, I love what, I love Liam Scott. and Thomas, I think they're, they're good adversaries. I think they're, you know, yeah, they uh, do, yeah. You, obviously you, I love Scott. When you talk Scott. about chemistry, you two have chemistry, you know? Yeah, we have, a, and we, yeah, we're friends and also, you know, so I enjoy hanging out with Scott regardless, but, but when we get to work together, it's fun because I can kind of just like if everyone watches the show and sees something like um, at the fashion show, for instance, and he's, he refuses to, to be there to support hope because Thomas is a part of it. It's like what crappy husband uh, would ever like, that's the worst thing a husband could probably do in that scenario. And he did it. And then, you know, no, nobody really talks about how it's a bad thing. It, Thomas gets the ability to come in in scenes and actually call him out on all those kind of things. Um, and I think the audience seems to really respond to that and they love that too. So that's cool. well, and yes, we, we love the fashion show. We want to see more Thomas fashion shows. Um, okay. Let me, let's, we got a lot of callers on the line. Let's see who's on there. Hi, welcome to bold live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Casey, it's Jacarius and hey. calling from Cleveland, Mississippi. Hey, we're going to keep the phone uh, questions pretty tight tonight because I got a lot of people there and not a lot of time. So, Jacarius, what's your question for Matt? Okay. Uh, do, you some, do you get frustrated to have, like, writers who don't never allow your character to grow or develop, Matthew? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Thanks for calling in. Um, I, I mean, it, it can definitely be frustrating to, to have, it feels like a vicious loop for the character. Um, and I, and I, I definitely, I, but I think that we actually have seen Thomas grow over these last few years. It's just a very slow growth. Um, mm -hmm. I would love for, for people to see, you know, that actually come to fruition and you see like in maybe some kind of major incident, having Thomas be the actual good guy because he does have a good heart. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see what you're talking about, especially since we shoot so many episodes per year, you're, you're watching it all the time. And I think sometimes you see characters grow too much and they lose that edge, you know, they lose kind of what makes them their character. So that was, I, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what happened with Thomas, wasn't it? Cause like Thomas went to the complete other side of the spectrum and refused to do anything that could even be possibly seen as bad mm -hmm. and and i don't think that's thomas at all so um yeah I, I but but finding that middle ground and still seeing growth for the character over time i would love i would love to see thomas continue to grow um over the well, years well thank sure. you jacaris all right 
the phone line. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What makes them their character? Uh oh. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey, hi, Matt. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Hi, Casey. Hello. What? Who's this? It's Liz from uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, Liz. What's your question? Um. Yes, I just have a question. Um, I know that eventually it's going to come out. Uh, um, Thomas's mental state and the way he's been acting out is is Bell going to um, address that storyline respectfully? Okay, so you're asking talk about Thomas's mental health. Yeah, because I know. Hmm. Yeah, because okay. I can tell he's he's starting to have a mental health issue, and I'm just hoping that because oh. I honestly and other fans don't like how they're portraying his character right now, and I just hope that maybe he gets him persuades him to get some help respectfully instead of making. All right. Well, Liz, to, let me ask Matthew yeah. that. Let me give him a chance to answer. What do you think about that regarding a mental health? Uh, yeah, no. I, well, I think it's important you ask that question. Thank you so much for for asking it. Um, you know the the uh, the idea of mental health. It's very. Uh, this is a very very. I think this is a close to home issue for so many people, especially now after what happened in the last couple of years. Um, you know, uh, lockdowns or or being just by yourself can draw out issues that that maybe you can cover over on a regular basis, but also you know just emphasized other things made it worse and so it's it's very close to home for people and they don't they don't want to see something like that an, an issue like that being tackled on a show in a, in a non-respectful way um and i think that that every chance i've I, at least for myself i've taken it um as a as a burden to carry whenever because thomas has had he's, he has mental health issues he needs them worked out um and and I would love to see diving into the psychology of Thomas and really narrowing it down instead of more you know kind mm -hmm. of just explaining it away a little bit and nobody really talks about what the specific issue he has. I would love to actually tackle a you know a specific issue that people are struggling with. I mean, but but we you know we've just done it in in small ways over time, like you know when we had the the mannequin thing happening. I mean that was that was that's paranoid schizophrenia um no matter how it's induced so that that's what you're seeing manifest on screen whether it's realistic or unrealistic that that situation ever takes place mm. that's that's a, that's a situation that a lot of people are struggle with or know someone who's struggling with and so um i like that we were able to touch on a subject like that in a time when people were suffering with mental health or new people that were and i was hoping that that if anything it would make people more empathetic toward the people that they know that maybe are struggling um, by seeing a character on their, their favorite show struggling with something very deeply. Um, so I would love to, to see, you know, I mean, who knows where it could go, uh, if that it actually is something we could pursue, but I would love to see something like truly diagnosable that, that explains everything that Thomas has been through and what he continues to struggle with. And then everyone rally together for him to, to get him help. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for calling in. Let's see who else is on here. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Angelica, the Pomeranian girl. The Pomeranian hey, girl. You? you wanted to ask about yep. uh, Matt's dog, Maisel. Oh, yeah, yes, I do. And um, real quick, though, I wanted to ask, uh, it's kind of a scandalous question, but you guys got me thinking so Hope and Thomas is my dream pairing, and I know we're not going there right now. But what would you think of Brooke and Thomas? I love that idea. We 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 we've had that a few years ago with the berries, right? You know, Thomas and Brooke have yeah. a history. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and, and I think I think Kelly and I would love to play that. I think that would be a lot of fun, um, especially with what's been happening over the last few years. You know, there's this obvious fire between those two, and that can be um, that can be a huge uh, reason for people to get together. So uh, that would be a lot of fun. That'd be great. 
All right. Yeah, I would Maybe. like that. Did you I have a question? Why, you want why, to ask why, a question about Maisel? Yeah. Do you yeah, want to know yeah, about Maisel? I love, yes, I love dogs. Tell us you know, about I your Dalmatian, my man. Pomeranian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was that question? I'm sorry. Angelica? Um, tell us about your dog. Um, oh. Yeah, I yeah, want to hear more about your dog. <laughs> She's the sweetest dog in the world. Uh, I love Maisel so much. So she originally was was uh, my girlfriend's dog, um, but but she was kind of it was given to my girlfriend uh, by her mom. Uh, okay. Uh, right, probably like within a, like two weeks of us going on our first date or something like that. It was very very quick after. So I kind of immediately became the dad. Now, now Brittany likes to say that that you know I'm actually Maisel's Maisel's like dad, and she oh. is like ostracized <laughs> from the family or something because I kind of <laughs> because I'm kind of like the uh, the alpha and I, I'm the disciplinarian. But um, she's this I don't know I, I, I knew nothing about Dalmatians, but she's the sweetest dog I've ever met in my life. She's so energetic and she's so smart. Oh. Um, and she's just got such a unique personality and she's so sensitive too. Like if I ever tell her to not do something, you can just see that she gets all sensitive and gets all weird. And then it's just like, she has this very unique personality and I love her so much. And I wish she was here right now and she's not, Aww. she is, she's at the dog park. Well, this right is the whole now. reason we had you on the show to see your dog. Oh, well, so I didn't know that. I just... You should have told me I would have had her here. Oh, man. Oh, All right. Oh, man. Angelica, we're going to have to move on. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. All right. Let's see. <phone rings> Hi. Welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. This is Kelly Thornton from Georgia. Kelly, say hi to Matt. Hey, what's up, Kelly? Hey, Matt. <laughs> How are you? Um, pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. You got any questions for us? Oh. Yes. Um, first, I've loved your scenes the last couple of days. They were awesome. When Thomas started crying, I felt his pain to do with his father. And my question is, would you enjoy uh, Thomas getting revenge on everybody that keeps coming after him and not letting yeah. him just be a father? Yeah, I think that, um, well, I think Thomas has every reason in the world. Like when, when say, Brooke um, didn't trust him and said she was going to call CPS about, over, you know, him chopping up a piece of fruit with a knife. I mean, everyone does that. I don't think it's like that. Everyone just seems to. to I see. I eat bananas. Me. I eat bananas. No, no knife involved. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, okay. Well, most, most people, when they have fruits and stuff like apples they'll chop them up with a knife um but right. yeah like small small things like that turn into these massive big deals that other characters like to um to turn thomas into the villain you know he's always the the crazy person he's always the the unsafe person to be around um i would love to see Th i mean thomas kind of did that a little bit here with what happened to cps call with brooke but i would love to see him actually try and get like real revenge on uh yeah. the people who really really demonize his character and I, i'd love to see it in a way that's still like there's still a morally good reason it's just sort of like showing everyone else's faults i don't know exactly how that works but it would be it would be great to see thomas kind of get revenge and and finally be the one who's on top for once all right kelly thank you for calling in hi welcome to bold live what's your name where are you calling from Hi, it's Gina from Frankfurt. Gina. Hey, Gina. How are you? What's um, up? I'm good. How are you doing? I have a question. Um, Matt, first of all, I want to say you play a really good part. Um, I hate that you're always the villain, but um, I like how you and Douglas get along, you know, so I hope that don't change. Maybe um, I like the idea of maybe you uh, having your own company and maybe Hope being with you to um you know to do the line and then maybe that'll bring you guys closer with your son and um you know like how sally and the foresters went against each other it may be nice to see two types of fashion designs what do you think 
Yeah, I think that's a really cool idea. Um, I, I, as you were talking, I was just trying to think of a way that could actually make that happen. I think that, you know, you're going to need something for, for Hope to distance herself from what's going on with her. So something would probably have to break up her marriage um, that, that is independent of Thomas um, for her to be, you know, willing to actually work with Thomas in that capacity again and separate herself from the Forrester uh, family. I think that, yeah, yeah. So something would have to happen with her, her job at the company as well as her marriage probably to make that happen. But that would be a lot of fun if we could actually get there and have Thomas and Hope do something independent and, you know, it'd be a very different feel than what has happened for the last couple of years. That would be a blast. That'd be awesome. And I love the idea of Thomas going off and doing something else. Like you said, with, I think that Thomas and Sally paired off at a point and that was great too. So um, yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love that. We shall see. I know for one, I miss a lot of the fashion on the show. So I'd love to keep that going next year to like keep the fashion going. Um, and I know, I think everyone watching this, all 257 of you who are here, thank you for tuning in and watching. Um, want more fashion. Okay. We're getting towards the end, but Callers keeps going up. Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Who's this? Rebecca. How are uh, you? Rebecca. You gotta be honest. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca from San Clemente. Say hi to Matt. Hey Matt. How hey. you doing? Good. How you doing? Nice to talk to you. Okay. Um, my question is a uh, um a strange question, but is there really such thing as an app like that can copy other people's voices, or did you guys make that up? That is, an, you know, that is an interesting question. Actually, there was something in the news this week. It's called Parrot. That uh -huh. actually, uh, you know, copy copy people's uh, voices. Oh really? So there is such a thing. Oh, but and my second. Yeah. I'll go ahead. No, I was. You know, I, we also have believe yeah. a, a wrinkle-free formula. I imagine there's mm -hmm. wrinkle-free fabric out there. Hmm. Okay. What are you talking about, Casey? And <laughs> belief. <laughs> belief. I thought we were talking about the, uh, the app. The app that. Oh, I'm just talking about like inventions. You know. Oh, I see. You went off on. I'm sorry. It's been a. It's a long day. It's a long day. Yeah. No. It's <laughs> anyway, Rebecca. I got to move on. Well, Rebecca. Okay. Thank you for yeah, I think it's really cool. That Love you guys. A kind of an app that Bye. already kind of exists. Bye. Sorry, I wasn't. I, didn't I loved the interaction between you and uh, Henry, who plays Douglas. Like you guys are so oh, good right. together. I need more Thomas and Douglas. I would love more Thomas and Douglas, and I think that. I think that you saw Thomas become a good parent and I know that they, that they had this little thing where they wanted to do a callback to, you know, Thomas doing this like, you know, thing with Douglas where he like yelled at him and stuff in the past, but you can see that that's not what he did. And he knew that the entire time what Douglas was doing was the right thing. Um, and so I would love to see Thomas and Douglas like as a dynamic duo, not as like, yeah. you know, the, the father who's causing trauma to his son. Well, and what was interesting, it's like, you know, when you join the show, it's like normally, okay, you're going to have a chemistry. This is who your love interest is going to be. These are who you have your scenes with. But you came on as a single father with, you know, having a son. And that that was really who you needed to have the chemistry with. And like, like you go back to the casting, we just, we just struck gold with the, the two of you. I know. I didn't even I didn't even meet him from before we were on camera together, and it just worked perfectly. I mean, he, he like he actually he looks like he could be my son, and like he's he's so cute and he's so fun, and, and we have yeah. such a good time together. And he's such a you know he's just such a, a natural presence. Um, he's it's it's so easy to be his on screen dad. There you go. All right. Well, I'm gonna take one more caller. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Melissa from Hopesville, New York. Hi, Matt. Hi, Casey. Hello. Hey, how are you? You have a question. Good. How are you? Uh, yeah. Um, well, now that the secret's out, uh, what? How do you think? Uh, 
Thomas is going to be able to really redeem himself with like Ridge, Douglas, and everyone. Yeah, I think that that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before a little bit. But, um, you know, you, I, I think it might need to be something where Thomas goes off on his own and actually continues a little bit down the path of being against his family um, instead of because kind of what happened before was he disappeared for three months and then he sort of came back and he had his tail tucked between his legs and he was really sorry. And I, I don't think that that's what Thomas Thomas is going through now. I think that, that he – he knows that what he did, that small thing he did was wrong. And it's not small, but, you know, in the grand scheme of what he's done, it's pretty small. And that, that um, he actually just showed a few people in his life and how they are kind of, you know, not so great themselves. And um, so I think that he has every reason to push away from his family and be like a, 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 a force against his own family for the time being and eventually that could lead to redemption um yeah that's the way i see it at least i i, I would love that you guys as a family together and everything that the story like killed me i was like no <laughs> hopefully they can see it back i know to, it's, to and it's so much fun working with them all right yeah it well, feels like such a natural family thank you melissa thank you so much okay you know what matt Thanks. one more one more i'm gonna see one more caller hi welcome to bold life What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Casey. Hi, Matt. This is Susan from hey. Las Vegas. Susan. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm really good. Okay, Matt, everybody's been asking you about Thomas and Thomas this and that. I want to ask you something as Matt. When you go on social media, I mean, do you think it's cool that people, you know, are, you know, they, they go after? The fans go after each other over characters, and and I'm just curious what what your opinion of that is, or how you know I'm sure you wouldn't encourage people to you know oh team Liam or team Thomas you know, and, and I'm really curious what it, what does an actor feel when they read all that stuff? Uh, yeah, you know, well the, the the first thing is is. Social media is always, I've always felt very alien to social media in general. I think that something happens online that it's a disconnection from the humanity of talking to people. So in a way you, you do get the extremes of some people are attacking each other when in reality they actually wouldn't if they saw the other person. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I mean, it's, 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 it's great to see when people are, are fans of the show and they get so into it that they, they want their, you know, their, their people, the people they identify with and, people that um, either make them happy or sad or whatever um, are doing good things or bad things and they want good for their characters and whatnot. So long as they, they keep it, um, they understand that when they're talking to other human beings, these are other human beings and they are just, they're other image bearers of God that deserve your respect. And so, so long as, as everyone is, is fighting clean, you know, uh, and, and, the, and the best terminology I guess I can use right there is it, then it's it's perfectly fine. It's just when people disassociate with the humanity of other people and start attacking people. That's when it's like, all right, th we don't need any of that. There's that's not that's not worth it. Right. I agree 100 percent. And I appreciate your honesty. I just really it bothers me a lot because I've been watching soaps forever. But social media, I'm not, you know haven't been following uh twitter that long at all but i started to and i just it amazed me that people would would you know put people down and that you guys are all doing a great job i you know i don't want to lose another soap i get so tired of people saying they're going to stop watching the show because storylines change situations change you know six months from now thomas you can be like the leader of the maroney family or something you know so that was my, you know, who knows? Or you could fall in love with one of the Logans and not hope. Okay, we've been there and done that. But, <laughs> it, it, you know, and brought the families together, you know. I don't, Who knows? That's yeah, I, I, I love you. Thank you for calling in. That is a great way to end this uh, bold live. You're right. In the season of, uh, you know, the season of uh, the holidays, let's just uh, be kind. Be loving toward one another. What you've done to the least of these, you've done to me, Jesus said. Treat everyone else like an image bearer of God, no matter what they've done 
or who they are right in front of you. Don't let your emotions get a hold of you and, and be loving towards them regardless. Yeah, the love over hate. Okay, well, listen, guys, thanks for being so patient with me, and I appreciate your answering my questions. Hey, have a good weekend. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Well, with that, the phone lines are closed, Matt. Before I let you go, we need to do one more thing, and that is to say uh, hi to all the fans. Fan roll call. Oh, yeah, we got we to name them. Roll call. So, everyone, this is your chance. Uh, please type your name in the comment. So, uh, as the comments go whizzing by, uh, Matthew can give you a shout-out, and we'll do this uh, as soon as your names start appearing. All right, Angie. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we got Kelly over here, Jerry, Jerry JPG, um, uh, Patricia, Mark Felicia, Lynn, Jamal, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for uh, sending in. Teo, we got Lena, we got Joan, we got, oh, now they're pouring in. Christina, Dominique, Emma, Alyssa, uh, Taylor, uh, Jules, C, is that DD? Uh, Amanda, Alicia, uh, Misha, uh, oh my goodness, it's hard, so hard to keep up. Uh, Rebecca, Dominique, Aaron, Emma, Joan, April, uh, uh, Mandy, um, uh, okay. Jennifer. Yeah. That uh, time. Yeah, yeah, Very good. All yes, right. Thank you. Makita. Well, Matthew, thank you so much. Um, I will, Thanks, uh, we will love to have you back whenever you'd like to come back. You're, and you're, I would love to you're say, a great guest. Just, to, just to everyone who's watching, be kind to Casey. I mean, oh. he's doing he is doing his hardest over here, and he loves all of you. And uh, and he he's not the reason that you uh, that you're that you're PO'd. It's probably just something that's happened on the show and that kind of drama. So just share show some love to him because he works really hard to make this whole thing happen, and I appreciate it. You're you're a good guy, Matt. All right. Well, thank you so much, and. Um... All right. Have a good week. A good start to your weekend. If you're hey, you too. All right. We'll talk to you All later. All right. Love you, man. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. Matthew Atkinson. Um, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for tuning in. We have, That was a really good show. I had uh, a lot of you here. This was So this was a new day, Thursday. Uh, David, I asked you to put a poll up there. If uh, And I saw Mona. I saw you asking you, like, Thursday. Uh, should we keep, should we move the show to Thursday or do you like bold life Fridays? Um, I don't know. Reach out to me. Let me know. Um, I certainly missed all you guys. I love all you guys. I love the bold and beautiful family. And you know, we are like any family. We have our ups and downs and, but we are here for each other and, um, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I love doing this show and I love interacting with all of you. Um, but I want to know, should I do it Thursday or Friday? I personally like Friday because that's kind of the end of the week. Thursday for me, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, I have meetings and that makes it a little more difficult. Or would you like to see like, um, a mix, like mix it around different dates. I don't know. Cause I know a lot of you work, um, and you have your responsibilities as well. So you can't always make Friday. So maybe a Monday would be better or, you know, I would love to do a weekend show, but then, you know, sometimes it's difficult with the cast. So, uh, there you go. Um, what else is going on? Um, no, just thank you all for tuning in. I had a lot of fun. I think I'm going to go do a little work and, uh, cause we've, have some scheduling issues here at the Bold and Beautiful, so I want to check in on that, and then I'm gonna hop on over on my Instagram and um, kind of uh, check in with you over there. Casey's after party, right, Candice? Hey, Candice, how are you? I might do Casey's after party, so you can follow me at Casey Cass or on Twitter at Casey Kasperzik. Um, But yeah, so there you have it. We never got the poll has been up for about five minutes. Well, I don't see the poll. David, where's the poll? I don't see it on my, oh, oh, wait, wait, oh, there it is. Oh, I see it. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Fridays, oh, Friday, 60%. Okay, okay. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty even though. People like the, that, huh. I have to think about that. All right. Well, uh, that's all the show we have for today. Um, I do want to thank you all once again, and until next time, continue to be bold 
be beautiful, and be back next week for an all new Bold Live. Have a great night, everyone. So that's it. That's it, Katie.